Hey guys, today we're here to talk about the two different basic types of pouring techniques. You got a clean pour or a puddle pour, and then you have a dirty pour. Now they don't differ too much in the process, but I wanted to show you an example of one of each. That way you could see for yourself a difference. I'd like to talk a little bit about the materials we're using today. For our paints, we're using Grumbacher Academy Acrylics, and for our colors, we have Mars Black, Titanium White, Thalo Green, and Prussian Blue. For our pouring medium today, we're using Grumbacher Pour 44, one of the newer pouring mediums out on the market. It is uh, got an AP seal, which means it's non-toxic, no harmful ingredients, we love that. And it's also made of all fine art materials, so we know that it's archival and great for long-term projects and preservations. We also already have prepped our canvas in episode one. Check out that video if you want to see the right way to mix all of your paints with the pouring mediums, as well as get your canvas ready to go to make the process nice and easy. All right, so to get started on our puddle pour, it's important to point out the major difference between this and a dirty pour, which is, to start off, we're not gonna mix any of our colors. They're gonna stay in their own cups, and we're gonna pour them directly from their cups down onto the canvas. Now you can just alternate between each color, uh, spread them out in different areas on the canvas. Uh, eventually we're going to use the canvas and tilt it around. Some characteristics of a clean or puddle pour are going to be less color mixing uh, and that's because you're getting those hard lines from not mixing the colors before you pour them down onto the canvas. This would be a time if you have it with you, uh, whether it's a heat gun, a torch of some kind, uh, even just your breath alone uh, sometimes can be enough to pop some of the surface bubbles. Uh, a lot of them will rise out themselves, but some of them will need some help, and now would be the time to do that. Now you just need a place to put your wet painting uh, where you won't be tempted to touch it, because it is going to take some time to dry. Depending on how thick your paint layer was poured, it could take 24 all the way up to 72 hours. All right, so now that you've seen an example of the puddle pour, I'm going to show you a dirty pour. Now, the main difference of a dirty pour compared to a puddle pour is that uh, before we put the colors onto the canvas, we're actually going to mix them together into one cup, hence the term dirty. You can kind of alternate uh, to, again, personalize your final outcome. So now it's time to get that one cup onto the canvas. There's a lot of different ways that you can do this, and in some of our future videos, we'll show you different ways to do this. Today, I'm just gonna pour it right onto the canvas, and that's a perfectly acceptable way to do it. Now that your color is poured out onto the canvas, the same way that we did with the clean pour or the puddle pour, we're gonna pick up the canvas and move it around a little bit. Once you're happy with uh, the design, after you've tilted it a little bit, you can do the same thing that we did with our uh, clean puddle pour, which is just find a safe place where you can set it aside, where it's laying relatively level so that the paint won't drip completely off of one side, and leave it there for about a day or two to dry. Hey guys, it's been about 24 hours and our paintings are completely dry. First, we have our clean pour or our puddle pour and you can see that the uh, hard edges between colors remained just that, hard edges. There wasn't a whole lot of color mixing. Uh, our colors dried very dark. We must have used a lot of pigment in our color mixtures to begin with, and so that's something we can either adjust next time or use again if we love how it came out. And for our dirty pour, here is your end result. You can see how we have a lot of color mixing going on uh, between the blues, the greens, the blacks, and it really brings out some nice gradients uh, and a lot more unpredictable effects across the rest of the canvas. So I got to be honest, I'm really happy with the way that both of these came out. Uh, I don't know that they would necessarily go great hanging next to each other, but as independent pieces, I think that they'll uh, look really awesome once we get them framed in maybe some wood or something like that. So that's it for our dirty pour versus clean pour or puddle pour video. Hope you guys got some great inspiration and hope you tune into our next one where we'll do some string pulls. 
Thanks for watching. I'm Joe with Grumbacher. See you next time.